Hello, I'm Dr. Rick Kelly. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm following up on my previous video that discussed the wide margin of safety for ivermectin, both in the research literature and through over three decades of use with billions of doses given. In this video, I want to address the question, does it work for COVID-19? The research literature is far too extensive to review in any 10 videos. So I'm going to focus on two meta-analyses. The first, published in the American Journal of Therapeutics, lead author Bryant, and secondly, an online meta-analysis that is kept current daily at ivmmeta.com. I'm going to jump right into the information, but if you stick around to the end, I'll circle back and give you my thoughts on how we got where we are and what we should do with regard to COVID and ivermectin. So first, featured in the July-August 2021 edition of the American Journal of Therapeutics, titled Ivermectin for Prevention and Treatment of COVID-19 Infection, a Systematic Review, Meta-Analysis, and Trial Sequential Analysis to Inform Clinical Guidelines. The authors reviewed the bibliographic database through April 21, 2021, and found 24 randomized controlled trials involving 3,406 participants that met their review criteria. They excluded the large number of observational studies out of hand as being inferior by nature of their study design. If you want numbers, I recommend you go to the link in the description below. Still, they found, as you will, that almost all of the studies showed that ivermectin was effective when used for prophylaxis and early disease and it reduced deaths overall by 42%. The thing that stood out to me were the graphs that in almost all studies that showed beneficial effects in their endpoints to a greater or lesser degree. I will leave a link in the description for the article for you to review. Next, we turn to the online meta-analysis found at ivmmeta.com. If you are a numbers person and want to get the most in-depth data and up-to-date information, this site is for you. They have information on ivermectin as well as many other therapeutics that have been found to be beneficial in use of COVID. That's where I recommend you go. You'll find links to every study there and I'm not going to argue here about FDA approval. As, point, as I pointed out, though it is approved for a different use, ivermectin is not authorized by the FDA or World Health Organization for treatment or prophylactic use for COVID-19. Both said some time ago that additional trials need to be done. We're still waiting for them to update their recommendations. I'm also well aware that the FDA often grants full approval of new drugs with only one trial and a limited number of patients. First, the summary slide. So as of August 17, 2021, there are 63 trials involving 26,398 patients. These studies were done with varying endpoints and dosages. However, taking in the whole, they showed a 73% improvement when used in early treatment, a 40% improvement when used in late treatment, and an 86% improvement when used prophylactically. There is a 69% improvement overall. But Dr. Kelly, we don't want all the trials. We want the randomized controlled trials because they're the best and most reliable. Okay, in the 31 random controlled trials, there were 67% improvement among early treatment, 30% improvement with late treatment, and 84% improvement with prophylaxis. And overall, 60% improvement. I'm going to go through several slides quickly, but notice that the green dots up on the right side indicate improvement in the study, while the red dots indicate lack of improvement or worsening. So for prophylaxis and early treatment, they found a 72% and 86% improvement respectively. In hospitalizations, they found a 63% improvement with early treatment. When looking at mortality alone, they found a 61% decrease in mortality with early treatment and a 96% reduction when used prophylactically. The meta-analysis is also showing a 62% reduction in viral load, which correlates with how contagious a person is, and that was with early treatment. You may ask, if this is true, then why isn't it being used more? 
Well, included in the meta-analysis is a graphical representation of the use worldwide. The darker the green, the more it's being used. Lack of use could be due to lack of significant outbreak, lack of knowledge by practitioners, the following of outdated guidelines, or the lack of availability. If you can think of other reasons, I'd love for you to leave them in the comments below. But one medication does not replace vaccines and other measures. There is a long list of therapeutic agents which appear to provide some benefit against COVID-19 in certain patient populations, both approved and unapproved. I believe that we should use all practical, effective, safe, and available means to combat COVID-19. It's been said that elimination of COVID-19 is a race against viral evolution. Again, we all need to recognize that no treatment, vaccine, or intervention is 100% available and effective for all current and future variants. Denying efficacy of any method increases the risk of COVID-19 becoming endemic and increases mortality, morbidity, and collateral damage. Please note, I am not recommending that you take ivermectin. I am providing information that's available regarding its use and what the research meta-analysis are, are showing. But remember, you should always obtain medical advice from your medical provider who is familiar with your care. So going back to my thoughts, let me briefly set the stage. The global response to COVID-19 in the beginning was largely limited to monitoring and containment of the virus. Some did much better at this than others. Some international organizations hampered the attempts to limit the spread of the virus through air travel. Still, COVID-19 did spread and early on, the medical community at large was told that there was no treatment except what we call supportive care, which means recommending rest, fluids, fever reducers, and staying home until it's over. I told many people that. Unless you were so bad that you needed to go to the hospital, then you got advanced care. Emergency docs, hospitalists, intensivists, and their supporting healthcare workers, the true frontline workers, provided fluids, nutrition, oxygen, mechanical ventilation, and other therapies that were thought beneficial. But mainly the patient had to fight off the virus on their own. Most would recover, but many died. Doctors and nurses did their best, and early on, many of them died from exposure to this new contagion. While doctors and nurses struggled to keep patients alive, virologists, researchers, academics, government bureaucrats, big pharma all started looking for a solution, likely with varying motives. Some felt that vaccines were the answer. Others, new drugs and therapeutics. Still others looked to older medications, already proven safe in humans, that might have benefit beyond their approved usages. Not only antiviral drugs were looked at, but others that had been found to have antiviral activity. One of these drugs is ivermectin. Though you may have heard from various authorities, government agencies, or TV talking heads, even social media, that ivermectin is an antiparasitic drug and not an antiviral drug. Well, this antiparasitic wonder drug has been studied by researchers around the world for over a decade for its antiviral activity on nearly two dozen different viruses. Antiviral effects were found both in vitro, which means in the glass or test tube, and in vivo, which means in the living organism. It's been found to have antiviral activity on Zika virus, dengue virus, yellow fever, West Nile virus, HIV, and many others that you and I have never heard of. Various doctors tried different treatments to save lives of the sickest of the sick. They began to network and share their experiences in what seemed to be working for their patients. As months went by, ivermectin seemed to provide a safe addition to the armamentarian of beneficial therapies, especially in early cases, which is often the case in antiviral treatment. Treatments do not replace vaccines and other measures. The list is long of therapeutic agents which appear to provide some benefit in certain populations, and everyone needs to recognize that no one treatment or vaccine or intervention is 100% available and effective for all current and future variants. 
Denying the efficacy of any method increases the risk of COVID-19 becoming endemic and increases mortality, morbidity. It has been said that elimination of COVID-19 is a race against viral evolution. I think that physicians, practitioners, regulators, and the general population should keep an open mind, follow the science wherever it leads. If you got some useful information from this video, please like and click the button right here to subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Have a great day and be well.